Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our producer, Jeff DeRall, and we uh, are in the Hayes Arts Council location in the main gallery of the Hayes Arts Council. We're on display for a while longer, the 40-year perspective of Michael Florian Gilg. And Mick joins us today. Mick, as he is known by most of us, I think. By everybody. And we certainly uh, want to re reflect on 40 years and try to get in as much of those 40 years, Mick, as we can here. To begin with, uh, describe your art to people who uh, come to see the display here at the Hayes Arts Council. Well, a lot of times it's almost schizophrenic. <laughs> uh, I have figurative artwork, which you can see around here, mm -hmm. and then the back gallery has a lot of etchings and drawings, and I like to travel a lot, mm -hmm. and so quite often I bring back memories from travels, and Italy is one of my favorite places, so there's a lot of travel imagery that's mm -hmm. probably not as expressive and as creative as these things, but uh, they're almost like large postcards to myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they have some sort of technical virtuosity and etching and things that I've learned over the years. But I do a lot of sort of naturalistic landscape things to remind my, myself of my travels. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of these, the larger, and I, I say this kind of in joking, more serious work is uh, the more creative, expressive stuff. And uh, I go back to an artist named Robert Rauschenberg whose definition of art was, show me something I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and in a way, the, the Italian etchings and things, which are real popular and have paid the rent for quite a while, uh, are, are more just illustrations of, of things, although they have some emotion and I always take a little artist license with them. But a lot of these paintings just start from imagination. And they may start with a, with a very vague concept abstractly in my mind. And, and, and quite often, I'll just build a painting. Uh, some of these you'll see where I have some splatters and drips, where sometimes I'll just have a large canvas, and I'll lay it on the floor and just roll some paint out on it and just see what happens and then start reacting to that. So uh, my, there is no graduate work here or anything. This, this show started. Uh, the work in here started in 1972 when I graduated with my MFA degree, which is a, a terminal degree in art. There's no PhD in painting. And so uh, I thought, well, that was 1972. This is 2012, 40 years. That's a nice round number. So there's nothing before that. But my uh, formative work started in the 60s and figurative, anything to do with drawing or technical skill was almost frowned upon. That was Jackson Pollock time. Mm -hmm pure expression. Art was just about expressing your emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem was, and, and with Jackson Pollock, who could draw as well as anybody, he worked with Thomas Hart Benton, you know. Mm -hmm. but, and then he diverted from that into more expressive type work. Uh, the problem with that is that the generation after him didn't learn how to draw. They just learned how to express themselves. And when I went to college, mm -hmm. that was the main focus. So, I mean, I have a museum purchase in Jocelyn Art Museum in Omaha that is just a, a large design of color and splatters and things. And so I had some pretty good success with that sort of thing. And that's what I did all through graduate school. There was no recognizable imagery. And quite often not even done with a brush. You know, it was dripping and splattering and wrinkling canvas. And it was mostly about experimentation. And I'm certainly glad I did that because it's a great foundation for what. But after I graduated and uh, became quote, an artist, you know, without being student in front of it, mm -hmm. uh, I went back and looked at my sketchbooks and, and napkins from beer joints and things that I'd kept, and almost every one of those sketches had something to do with the human figure. And I, it just dawned on me, like, well, these are your, this is probably what you really like to do. This is probably the real you, and these other things were done for graduate thesis exhibits and to please mm -hmm. committees and things with the, uh, you know, the, the current time frame. And so uh, I, I just started saying, well, the problem is I didn't know how to draw very well. So I spent a lot of time just every day would just practice drawing and do that. And uh, you realize the human figure has been a motif or a subject in artwork for 35,000 years. Mm -hmm. you know, the cave drawings in Lascaux, 
uh, you know, the Venus of Willendorf, and then there were some people that you may have heard of, like Michelangelo and Leonardo <laughs> and people like that, who, who could draw fairly well. And, uh, and so then I, I started studying art history, and it's, it's amazing how much you can learn when you don't have to. And uh, so I wasn't doing it for a test or something. And then, you know, I complained about art history all the way through college. And now almost every day I read something about art history and learn from it. So too soon old, too late smart sort of thing. Uh, but a lot of these paintings have uh, some sort of at least subliminal reference to art history mm -hmm. and, and the artists that have gone beyond and put into maybe a more contemporary reference with a, a with sometimes more contemporary color scheme and things like that. So. Uh, another schizophrenic possibility of mine is that this room is very, very colorful and bright, and when you go to the back room, and uh, is completely black and white, because the room had been painted black for a Sean McGinnis installation mm -hmm. show a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it just, I thought, wow, what a perfect place to put drawings and prints and no color. So I had a rule, no color in that back room. and so. There's like the colorful Mick here and the black and white Mick back there. And uh, so, you know, I'm not answering your question very well. Well, but, you're but, but answering there. my question perfectly. <laughs> and there's also, we should uh, point out, in the smaller gallery, mm. uh, just to the south of the main gallery here at the Art, uh, Arts Council, uh, is the rejected Mick <laughs> works. He says those are the ones that didn't make the cut for out front. Well, and probably not because of the quality, just because of the size. Mm -hmm. One of the things that most people don't realize about an exhibition like this is that I want the whole show to look good. Mm -hmm. You know, when you walk in the door, I want you to, f to feel like, okay, this is an exhibition, not just a bunch of clutter. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of thought. I spent a week here with Brenda just arranging things. There were, uh, oh, way over half the work didn't get in here. And it wasn't because I wanted to try to represent the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And then I also wanted it to look good together. And so a lot of the things that, that were rejected were simply they didn't fit on the wall in the right place. Because I, I'm, I, and Chai Wat Tumsa Jarrett, a good friend of mine down at Fort Hayes, a graphic design professor extraordinaire, great human being. But he always says, design is everything. And it's design is how you organize the space in your life. And so uh, a lot of people, when they look at a painting or a drawing, they see the subject matter. Uh, but I, I quite often, when I'm looking at a painting and drawing, I'm looking at the space around it. Uh, I, I always told my drawing students that when you draw a line, you're drawing two shapes. You know, if you're drawing an apple and you start that apple, you're drawing the apple, but you're also putting it in the space around it. So, and in order for it to be a good drawing or a good painting, both of them have to be interesting. So position is everything, and position of objects within the painting or position of the paintings within the show becomes important. So uh, uh, a lot of it was just thought about, okay, we'll set this one here, but it doesn't look good to that one. And then when you walk in the door, so the reject ones were just some that didn't fit into the room, but then they turned out to look very good on that wall. So it, it worked out well. Maybe you've noticed uh, in uh, mixed discussion here, uh, uh, his roots in a college professorship. Yeah. 30 years of roots. <laughs> <laughs> and how the explanations are so clear. I'm talking to, f to fifth graders <laughs> who are 19 years old. <laughs> uh, you're also talking to lay people <laughs> yeah. who come in and see the immediate emotion here at the Hayes Arts Council in the main gallery with the work of uh, Mick Yilg. Um, you've noticed then changes from your early work back mm -hmm. oh, 1972. Absolutely for the 40 year transition. Oh, what do you attribute that to? Is it uh, a maturity? Is it a change of direction? What is it, Mick? You know, it's, it, that's, that's a tough question, but it, it probably is, uh, you know, again, quite often I will go back and look at sketchbooks from 20 or 30 years ago, and there'll be an idea that I didn't develop fully. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I mean, always, people always ask me, what's your favorite painting? And I quite honestly will say the one I'm working on. Mm -hmm. uh, it does, it sounds kind of cold, but these, these are my paintings and I'm proud of them, but they don't hold a lot. You know, I'm much more interested in the one I haven't done. And uh, you may remember Joel Moss. Sure. Joel Moss was just a great guy. And uh, after Joel had retired, he lived in Hayes for a short time and mm -hmm. I was over to his, he had a wonderful little studio in his backyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure, we may have had a beer or something, but, uh, and I asked him, I said, Joel, you know, you've retired, and, and at that time, he was selling every painting he made. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, I said, you know, you just have it made. And uh, I said, you know, you're selling all your work and, you know, it's just going well. And I said, what do, you, what do you got to do? And he says, you know, Mick, I just want to get one of them right. And, and I really understand that, you know, as, as, as satisfied as you can be with a painting, it's never, you know, I think if you ever paint a painting and you think this is as good as I can do, you're probably doomed. You know, every one of these I could go back and I could fix, you know, and you just can't do that. You know, there's all kinds of stories of artists who go into museums and start to work on their paintings after mm -hmm. they've been sold. It's just not, not allowed. Don't but, do that. Don't do that. But, but you know, it's just uh, everyone, and, and the wonderful thing about getting older, which there isn't much wonderful about it, but for me, everything I do creates a couple more ideas. Mm -hmm. And so pretty soon that blossoms out too. I mean, my studio is just a terrible mess now because I've got, I want to work on these etchings. I just got back from a bicycle ride in Poland, so I've got some Polish images I want to mm -hmm. do. And there's a couple paintings I want to get ready. And there's a show coming up in Lindsborg. And so it's just a wonderful feeling. But uh, they, they, I don't think about how they've changed, but they have. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the colors have gotten more intense. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, I think part of it is when you're really young as an artist, you want to kind of show off your technical skill. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the drawings in the back room are just overly done. You know, there are details on top of details on top. And that's just, you know, there's a point when you're, when you quit expressing yourself and you're just decorating. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to learn where that's at. And when, it, when I've just expressed my idea well enough and not to just you know, put something inside of every little thing and uh, show off because I don't have to worry about my resume anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so I think the paintings might just be a little more direct now, a little more simplistic, but, but they're probably easier to understand. And uh, I like that. Early influences, Mick? Early influence, I'll have to go back to Frank Nichols, mm -hmm. uh, the portrait over here, uh, Skip Harwick, Eugene Harwick. Mm -hmm. uh, Joanne Harwin. Uh, I was just very, very lucky to come to Fort Hayes State University in 1965. Uh, I barely made it out of high school, and I'm not stupid, but I was just, I was a bad student. <laughs> and uh, I, I like to always tell people about the ugly duckling story. And this is, sounds arrogant, but I was a swan swimming with ducks in a way. We didn't have an art department, and I didn't fit anywhere in high school. Wasn't a great athlete. And I came here, and I met these people. There was Harwick and Nichols and these guys. There was a guy named Torgowski here at the time. And they were so cool. And they listened to classical music, and they could draw, and they just, they were like gods to me. And then I realized, I don't know anything. You know, I wasted high school. So all of you, you know, whatever it takes, study hard all the time. But uh, I just wanted to be like those folks. And then uh, an amazing trip, Skip Harwick took us in a van to Lindsborg, Kansas. I was 18 years old and we stopped at the San Zane. Mm -hmm. And there was a painter there named John Bashor. And uh, he lives up in Wyoming now, I think. But uh, it just opened my eyes. And then from there we went to Wichita and I saw a George Gross painting, which of course was really grotesque and about, because he was, you know, he was in Germany in the 40s and uh, left in the 40s. But, and uh, Adolf Hitler was in hell and there were all these demons and things. And I was, that's, I like that, you know. And so, uh, uh, and then you grow out of that after a time. But, but I think Fort Hayes was the perfect location for me to come because I found the right people at the right time and then from then on from that day to today I've been trying to catch up which what I don't we you know I realized how little I knew about everything and so uh, I think other than if we go back to the standard answer would be of course Rembrandt or mm -hmm. someone like that and I you know I still say well if you're having trouble with your etchings, open the Rembrandt book up, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but I think it was the art department at Fort Hayes State. We already talked about Joel Moss, who was just this amazingly free and easy but intense person who fought the administration all week long and then played golf with them on the weekends, you know, and that sort of thing. So I just learned about, more about life mm -hmm. uh, and, and being around those people, just soaking up their attitude and their expression. And then the technical stuff had to come kind of hard that uh, mm -hmm. it came, so that but, would be it. But you can, you can at least attribute to the, to the maturing process to having more experience to bring to oh, your work, absolutely. can't you, Nick? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, when you, there were some people who came, some collectors who came by last 
two nights ago, and we're looking at my etchings. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them's wife was there, and she's, I have a lot of etchings, like hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, how'd you do that? I said, well, that's an aqua tint. Well, how'd you learn how to do it? You know, so, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the process in printmaking, I think, is, is extensive, thanks to Frank Nichols and people mm -hmm. like that. And I, I spent one summer in a town called Valdetavo in Italy, studied at a printmaking workshop there from Pratt Graphics in New York. And then a good friend of mine, uh, in, I spent another summer back in the old days in the 80s in Florence, Italy, at a place called Santa Reparata Graphics Institute. And our studio was occupied by uh, Michelangelo. So you, you know, you're working in the same building that he had worked in. <laughs> and, but, and so the processes hadn't changed very much, but I learned a lot from those different people about process. And then you just, there's a certain part where it's confidence, mm -hmm. where you're just a little, you know, when you start out, you, you really think you know what you're doing, but now I, I can work without a net. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people, you know, I do a portrait once in a while, I say, well, how long did it take you to do that portrait? I say, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And they'll look at me and I said, honest to God, you know, I mean, it's the guy that's taking out your appendix, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want the first day he comes in. But, but it's, it's something like that, where if, if you do anything enough, you become more comfortable with it. And then you're also free to take a little, you know, experiment a little bit too. Okay. What do you want people to take away when they come to the Hayes Arts Council Gallery from uh, Mick Gilg's work? I just want them to come to the Hayes Arts Council Gallery. I want them to come a lot, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's hard to understand, and I'm not very good at explaining it because a lot of it is, I used to talk about there was surrealism, and we used to kind of joke about cerebralism, mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of it is just, there are a lot of visual questions here. Mm -hmm. And I like people to, to get their own stories out of my work. And mm -hmm. I rarely talk about it because it's amazing what people see in my paintings yeah. that I had no idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I like that interaction where people come in and they're challenged a little bit. Like mm -hmm. that old thing, like I said before, show me something you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And so I like them to, to spend a little time and, and think about it and see how it reflects to them. But, doesn't it come down, Mick? Dr. Terry Powell, uh, the choral director at Forte State University, made a very fine statement that I certainly uh, uh, would emphasize when it comes to art mm -hmm. in general. Uh, Terry said that uh, uh, it's emotion. I okay. mean, math and uh, physics and chemistry and such, those are, those are brain-type mm -hmm. functions. But when you come in and see Mick Yogue's work, there's an emotion connected with each piece, and that emotion could be different Oh, from sure. every person who views it. Almost guaranteed. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people, my best, in the best possible world, I'd like people to come in and just go, oh, ah, it's wonderful. <laughs> but I would much rather have them come in and hate it mm -hmm. and write a letter to the editor about how I should be run out of town or something like that than have them to be just ambivalent. Mm. The worst emotion that I can see, when somebody comes in and they go, oh, you know, and they just mm -hmm. sort of hump around and say, well, okay, this one is this, you know, the worst thing is they go, how much does it cost or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but when people aren't affected by it, I have not been successful. Mm -hmm. If they love it, I've been successful and I'm happy. If they hate it, I've been successful. I'm not happy, but, but it doesn't bother me that much. But, but if they come in and say, what is wrong with you? And they say, this just grabs me so wrong. And I think, aha, mm -hmm. I hit a nerve. Yeah. And that's expression. And mm -hmm. expression doesn't have to be good, you know. And but it's uh, all tied to emotion. Oh, it's all it? tied to, everybody is wired a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a different uh, upbringing and different, you know, some of these things, offend people because they, of something that happened in their life or something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just, I can't worry about that. And, uh, you know, I quit worrying about that. One of the nice things about Hayes is that no matter what the politics are, it's a very liberal town. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been painting figurative work here for 30 years at least. I've lived here off and on longer than that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and Brenda will, will talk about this too, that there is just no one, and they'll come in and they may not like it, but no one ever says, oh, you should take this down. I've never mm -hmm. seen anything about censorship or anybody mm -hmm. that closed mind mm -hmm. in this town. And it's pretty unique, mm -hmm. you know. 
I had a, a show shut down in, at K-State University one time because it was in the union and it, was open, it wasn't owned by the university. Uh -huh. It was one of the best things that ever happened to me because the students almost rebelled at that time and I got all sorts of press out of it. So <laughs> I always say one of the best things people could do for me would be to pick it out in front uh -huh. because all of a sudden then everybody will want to see what it Any is. Any kind of publicity, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, no. The, it, I just hope people come, and, and what I want people is to not, I don't think people are afraid, they're just a little bit nervous sometimes about mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. And you know, artists put their pants on one leg at a time like everybody else. And I just want people to come in here and to realize what a wonderful asset this is to the community. Mm -hmm. And Brenda Mater is just a man, Jenny back there, my God, they just work night and day. and. Uh, the fact is, the hard fact is that the funding has been decimated by mm -hmm. our current regime. And yes. uh, I can't, I don't want to argue politics, but, and I can kind of understand the philosophy that if, if a community wants an arts council, they should support it themselves. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of live with that, although I do believe that there would never have been a Sistine Chapel without government funding. Mm -hmm. and, and Beethoven wouldn't have written six, seven, and eight, ninth symphonies without government funding. Mm -hmm. So there is some quality to it. But uh, I think it, in this stage that if you want to keep, I know and everybody loves the gallery walks. Mm -hmm. You know, people talk to me, I see them at the gym, when's the next gallery walk? And I'll say, well, are you a member of the Arts Council? Mm -hmm. Well, no, and I say, well, these things don't just happen, you know? <laughs> a lot of people work really hard, and it, unlike on everything else, it takes a little money. So I always try to send people down and say, you know, it, there's different levels. Join the Arts Council, participate. So I just want people to feel comfortable and welcome here all the time, because they are. And no matter who's showing, you know, it doesn't matter. But this is, a, this is the, I think, the oldest arts council in the state, mm -hmm. 45 yes, yes. years this year. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the best that receives no funding to speak of. Mm -hmm. uh, the one in Lawrence is really nice, but that's government funded. Mm -hmm. And the one in Salina is really nice too, but I think the city owns the building and pays for the maintenance and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, for just doing it on our own, this is, a, this is an amazing place. And, uh, and so I, what I want people to do is just to come, and come every time there's another show and, and start to feel comfortable here. And become a member of the Hayes and Arts And become Council. a member of the Hayes Arts Council. <laughs> the 40-year perspective of Mick Hill now showing at the Hayes Arts Council, but for a limited time. And we'll talk more about Arts Council activities in part two of our Community Connection. Back with more coming up from Eagle Community Television, Channel 14. Every Sunday afternoon, NFL Red Zone takes you from game to game, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game. Go to NFL.com slash Red Zone TV. Get in the zone. NFL Red Zone. Every touchdown, every game, every Sunday afternoon. Get the NFL Red Zone for only $29.95 for this year's season. Call Eagle Communications at 877-61-EAGLE. Welcome back to Community Connections from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. We're in the gallery of the Hayes Arts Council with the director of the Hayes Arts Council, Brenda Mater, as we talk a little about upcoming events and activities with your Hayes Arts Council. First, Brenda, if you would, a short perception on your work here at the Arts Council and, of course, as director of mixed work. Oh, it, it was such a distinct honor when this all came together. It was an idea I'd had quite some time back. Not in thinking of it though as a 40 year career retrospective of Mick. I just, it was some time back and it was like, wow, we're getting close to where it's going to be a year that Mick will have been in retirement. So wouldn't a retrospective, I didn't think a, a major retrospective had been done. So I approached him about it some time back and it was a little bit like, oh, you know, he wasn't so sure. And, um, and I said, well, you, you think about it, you know, and oh, you know, so we kind of told him, oh, I'd have to get work together and this and that. And, and I thought, well, you know, if he doesn't want it to be as big of a deal, I could do, you know, part of the gallery as his retrospective, and I could develop a smaller auxiliary exhibit for the Founders Gallery. And so, in fact, it was some months later, I broached him about that and just said, just in case, he goes, oh, no, 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 I can feel this whole space. I've already got ideas for this. And I said, no, that's wonderful. And then as it went on, and, you know, then he brought to, brought to my attention, this is a 40-year career retrospective because he started his professional career in 72 and he finished with his, his MFA degree. And so it was, and then I wanted something special 
for a fall gallery walk as we kick off this amazing 45th anniversary year. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's sometimes how all the little pieces come together, even if you didn't know that's exactly the part the piece would play, but it just works and it's been wonderful. Mick's amazing to deal with. We knew that he would have no shortage of an incredible body of work. He's so beloved in the community as an individual, as an artist, and um, it was, you know, we just knew it would be wonderful. And indeed it was. The gallery walk was amazing. People loved getting to see and visit with Mick. And he was just, it was amazing working with him because as I said, you know, anything that we needed, getting all the title information, getting the work in and placed and hung, he did that. Ordinarily we do that internally. And um, Mick oversaw all of that. He had, had the time and the interest and the desire, you know, with a vision to put it together and he did. And so it, it was just, it's, it's been wonderful. And again, to have something of this magnitude and of this, this much of a celebratory factor, both for that artist and our organization. And that's why even the, the, the image at the front door is a uh, early, very early, early poster that was created by Mick, a, an, um, a self-portrait woodcut. And it even says on there, at Hayes Arts Council, you know, it was actually from one of Mick's very first exhibitions, the first Hayes Arts Council exhibition Mick had when it wasn't even this space. It was probably over there at the cellar gallery, mm -hmm. but that's what's at the front door. So the history with him goes back a long, long way. So this came full circle and was perfect. Well, we know there are activities ongoing, and of course they increased during the fall. Director Brenda Mater, uh, tell, tell us in a couple of minutes here, if you would, some of the things to look forward oh, to. Oh, this is an exciting year for us, being a 45th anniversary year. Um, of course, we had the big gallery walk. We're kicking off the McFamily Fun Nights, free arts and crafts activities for families and young children, totally free at the North Hayes McDonald's. We have our first of our children's theater productions, in fact, on October the 2nd, Tuesday, and we'll be bringing in probably six to 700 uh, kindergarten and first graders from Hayes Ellis, Victoria, Plainville, and Russell, who will see the show in the afternoon, and then a public performance in the evening, so families can engage in these kind of experiences with their young children, whether they saw the show during the day, or whether they're really young and didn't even get to go to it. And then we'll be having another exhibition opening um, starting the middle of October, a reception probably not till the very first of November, but that will feature um, a, a, a talented young woman who's doing installation type art, and it's going to be this work called Migrations. It'll be in our Founders Gallery by Tricia Weezy. And while she's in our Founders Gallery, we're also reprising a 20 year relationship. It'll be 20 years this year from our first exhibition featuring the work of Dr. John Cody. It was in 92. And I was so proud and honored to have that one as well. Only what will be unique about this is Dr. Cody's beautiful moth paintings, and he's still creating a lot of amazing new ones, will be hanging side by side in an exhibition that I'm sort of this serenity kind of ambiance we want to create. His son-in-law, Mark Shaken, who's actually a, um, an attorney in Kansas City, is also an esteemed photographer doing some amazing things. And um, I wasn't, it wasn't my original vision, but all of a sudden, again, it just came together to have this collaborative thing of the father-in-law, son-in-law hanging side by side with, with this, this theme of, of nature and serenity. So that's going to be going on this fall. Our five-state photography is, we're going to be sending out those entry forms, yep, right here, going to be sending these out in the course of the next few days to all photographers that we certainly have on our list right now in Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Colorado. And, but it's open to anyone in those states, any background experience, education, style, format, genre of photography. And um, so if anyone's got any interest in that and they're not on our list, don't believe they have that, give us a call or be checking our website within the next week or two because it will be there. Very exciting. That will be the anchor of our winter gallery walk in December. And then last but certainly not least to mention for right now, in honor of our 45th anniversary, we wanted to do something really special. We always have a very short annual meeting, and they're a very short event, and it's part of the early part of an evening that usually follows a wonderful celebratory, community engaging, performing arts opportunity. We've done mystery dinner theaters, we've had jazz concerts. This year we are so proud and honored to be presenting a special evening with Elvis Presley, courtesy of the amazing Frank Worth, a very talented local, local artist who is not an Elvis impersonator or an Elvis impressionist. He is an Elvis tribute artist. With all the grace, dignity, integrity, and respect, he performs as Elvis Presley. And I'm really excited because it's going to be, basically the evening is going to be the exciting, complete, I've gotten the song list, complete, Elvis Aloha from Hawaii concert that was done in 73 and seen around the world by satellite. It was a big deal at the time. But 1967-68, 
was the first year of the Hayes Arts Council, of course. That was the springboard year for us becoming what we are now. Mm -hmm. That was also the big comeback year for Elvis Presley. Everybody's aware of the, the leather suited Elvis in 67, 68 with that amazing 68 comeback special that set the stage for what became for him. And so it coincides with our first year. So that's how we kick off the evening with Elvis from that time. Um, tickets are going to be available at uh, the two larger Sears locations, Tom's Music House, um, and of course at the Hayes Arts Council. They'll be $15 a person. It is open to the public. It's not, it's not exclusive to Hayes Arts Council members, although we'd encourage those people who enjoy what we do to help support these ongoing efforts of the celebration of the arts in all formats. But it's going to be a wonderful night, and that's Friday, October the 26th, at the Fox Pavilion. Be looking for more information on that. But um, we want this to be an amazing, wonderful year. More things going on come spring for young people and for adults, but just an exciting year for an organization that's had a great legacy, and we're going to do our darndest to continue it for another 45 years. Brenda Mater, director of the Hayes Arts Council, and watch for those events forthcoming. Thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall, and thanks to you for watching Community Connection from Eagle Community Television.